Hey YouTube, I just wanted to put together a, uh, a quick video. I wanted to discuss how as my stack has grown, my mindset has kind of evolved. And it's made me a better silver stacker, better silver investor. Um, <clears throat> the operative word is patience. <laughs> I have a lot more patience than I had when I first started. And uh, we'll kind of get into that a little bit. The way I basically look at it is, is um, like three stages to uh, silver stacking. You have your introduction. You know, you're brand new to silver. You have your accumulation phase, which is where I feel I am now. And then you basically have your end game, right? Um, you know, you, you've got your, you've met your lifetime goal. Uh, you know, there are, cer there are certainly a lot of people on YouTube who are there now. Um, you know, I remember X, X Neutron talking about how he had already met his lifetime goal for silver, so now he just kind of buys things that interest him, not really uh, just to accumulate silver. <clears throat> you know, you can fill out sets and stuff like that. So when I first started buying, you know, remember I told you guys that I had that conversation with a guy on the plane. The problem is I had credit card debt at the time. And I basically promised myself that I would not start buying silver until I had all my credit card debt paid off. And also I had a, a vehicle payment. <clears throat> and uh, so really, I was chomping at the bit. Imagine, de imagine deciding that you were going to start investing in silver and then waiting for months. And that's basically what I did. So once I made that last payment <laughs> and had my last loan paid off, I mean, the floodgates opened up. I, I needed to buy and I needed to buy now. Now understand, at the time, uh, the problems that we were having in Greece, in Europe, were in full effect. You know, people were on CNBC every day talking about how the, uh, the credit default swaps on Greek bonds were going uh, to create a crisis. And, and, and the terms that they were using was uh, Lehman on steroids. You know, that's the kind of stuff that was being thrown around. And 2008 was fresh enough in my memory that, are you kidding me? A, a, a Lehman-style collapse but on steroids? What, what is that going to look like? <clears throat> so, you know, my, my first thought was, you know, if silver has any kind of utility in that kind of scenario, I need to have some. So I felt like I needed to have protection then and there. So, you know, I had this urgency combined with a newfound passion, pent up passion and it wasn't a good combination because uh, I you know I, I got a zero percent credit card I went down to my local coin shop and cleaned them out of uh, he, I bought every eagle he had every single one some of them were beat up and I'll show you guys sometime that one that it looked like it was dipped in blue paint but I bought everything he had and uh, you know, I overextended myself, so I just barely got out of credit card debt, and now I have. Now the thing is, having silver on the credit card felt different than cr normal credit card debt. Okay, let me just throw this out there because you know, with normal credit card debt, who even knows what you're paying? Um, you know, I don't know if it was dinner three months before and and all this other stuff. At least I could say, look, I have a couple thousand on my credit card. There's my silver, and it was zero percent interest. But that's nothing I would certainly uh, recommend doing today. But again, yeah, I was in this big hurry. I was also buying a ton on eBay, and I was buying single coins. I was buying Franklin proof halves and that JFK proof halves and proof sets on eBay, and I was overpaying. You know, buying one coin at a time on eBay and having it shipped to your house was just a drastic overpay. The problem is, I was uh, intoxicated by this incredible selection on eBay. Just anything that you could ever want, there it is. And, you know, the, um, the prices seem like it was like an incremental thing, right? Like, uh, okay, the proper price for this Franklin Proof half is $15. Okay, well, I'm paying $19. Well, I'm only overpaying by $4. What's the big deal, right? Yeah, times, you know, 50 of them. And suddenly you, you, know, you get a couple hundred dollars that you just basically threw out the window. So, it, I, but I was, you know, it was uh, addicting. Getting those packages in the mail almost every night, oh man, it was great. I had a buddy of mine. He's the one that bought the um, the, uh, the the Laos silver coin with the um, with the jade inlay, and he was doing Morgans. I was doing Franklin halves and Kennedy halves. He was getting Morgans and Peace dollars, and we call each other on the on the phone every night, all all laughing and excited because another package in the mail. It's Christmas again. 
So that was me when I first started. And I quickly realized that this is just the absolute dumbest way that I can be building my stack. You know, a lot of people will say to me, you know, if I only want to buy one ounce at a time, how do I go about doing that? And the, the, the thing is easy. You, you go down to your local coin shop. You know, if you have one that's close by, go to your local coin shop. Or if you need to place an online order, Silvertown is really the best way to go for buying a single ounce because it's free shipping. You get the Silvertown branded bars. They're pretty nice bars, and the, the premium is really reasonable. And like I, guess I, like I said, shipping is free. So, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to discourage you guys from buying a single coin on eBay. I'm just telling you it's, it's just a, an expensive way to build your stack, right? So now here I am with what I consider to be a, a pretty good-sized stack after a couple of years. And now... I'm waiting for deals. Okay, I, I basically look. I, I'd like to have a full Kookaburra set or a full Lunar Series set, but you know what? I you know that's going to be a really slow process, and I'm not going to actively pursue those older coins. I'm looking for deals that pop up. I'm looking for things as they get released and buying them when they're cheap. Okay, this this is the patience that I'm talking about. Um, I don't feel you know. I, I just uh, place these orders. And I would be okay with waiting the entire summer before I buy another ounce. Um, you know, uh, you know, price be damned. I, you know, if so, if something really presents an incredible buying opportunity, I don't know. Maybe I'll take advantage. But in all honesty, I, I'm 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 feeling very patient. I'm willing to wait this out. You know, a lot of people will uh, mock silver investors, okay, because. Of, of something that we often say. We often say, well, I hope it goes down even more. I'll buy more ounces. And they laugh at us and, and think, it's, thinks it's hysteri think it's hysterical. And you know what? If I were buying stocks, let me kind of contrast my, my viewpoint on this. If I went out and bought 100 shares of Apple, they're right. I wouldn't want the thing to go down so I can buy more shares of Apple. I already invested my money. I want my 100 shares of Apple to perform. Okay, and that's the way that I would be looking at it. But when I first started working for my company, I signed up for the employee stock purchase program. And I remember vividly, every single paycheck, every pay period, I would want the stock to go down so I'd get a cut, you know, it was fractional, but it was more shares for my money. My whole goal was at some point my company stock will be, I don't know, pick a number, say $100 a share. And I wanted to have 200 shares of stock. The only way for me to hit that was for it to go down in price. Same thing here. I want 3,000 ounces of silver and 50 ounces of gold. If silver shot to the moon, <laughs> whatever, if it, if it went up to even, say, 50 or $60, it'd be very difficult for me to hit my goal. Okay? But you know what? Oh, you'd have that validation. I'm right. I can't believe it. I picked silver and, it, and I'm right. Let me um, let me pick on a couple of the of the newer YouTubers here. Um, let, let's use the, some of the young guys. We got uh, Roman Morozov and Ariel Ramon, 1985. Okay, two young guys in the community just started out. Let's say they both bought their first 10 ounces of silver. Okay, and and they, they I think they picked a great time to start stacking low 20s. But let's say that uh, they bought their first 10 ounces, and let's say that. Uh, I don't know, in a month, silver shot up to 50 bucks an ounce. Hypothetical numbers, guys, I'm not, you know. Let's say it shot up to $50 an ounce. What would the uh, emotions be for them? I'm right. Silver went up just like I said. This is unbelievable. And now I have these 10 ounces that are now worth, you know, a few hundred dollars. They're worth $500 as opposed to, you know, $230, $240 but it validates their decision to buy silver. They were right. Now they feel great, right? But they have 10 ounces. That money is not going to really do anything for them. And now when they go to buy their next 10 ounces and realize, wait a minute, I want to buy a tube of Eagles, but now it's going to cost me 1100 bucks. If silver were to go up quickly, it would be very difficult for me to hit my lifetime goal. This feels like a gift that it's down here in the low 20s. Could it go lower? Yep. Absolutely. Some people are screaming for 17. But you also have to understand, guys, 
every time it ticks down, there's going to be somebody out there calling for a much lower silver. Okay, and it could happen. I I don't know. I have no idea. All I know is I'm patient. I'm patiently building my stack. I'm waiting for deals. And you know what? When I'm fully invested, you bet your butt I'm going to want silver to take that mo shot to the moon that you know everybody always talks about. I, I you know that that's when you really want silver to move up for you is when you're fully invested. Um. You know, a lot of people express concern about, you know, using silver and gold as part of my retirement strategy. I mean, I, I will tell those people, I will be diversified when I retire. I will have a fair amount of silver and I'll have a fair amount of gold and I'll also have some stocks <clears throat> and I'll have some real estate. Okay, I'll, I'll be about as diverse as you can. You guys are seeing me in my precious metals accumulation stage and this will this will take a few years to, to finish. But anyway, I'm... You know, I'm kind of I'm kind of starting to ramble a little bit here. The point is, I've been patient. I, I've learned patience. Um, oh, one more thing I wanted to say. The last evolution that I've noticed that some people have, and I don't have this yet, is they actually wait for entry points. They actually target certain uh, certain price points on silver that they target and they want to hit. Um, you know, I'll, I'll see people saying, "Well, I'm going to place an o a large order at 18, and I'm going to wait it out." Okay, I'm not there yet. I still place monthly buys. I still place regular orders. My thinking is smooth out the prices. Okay, now when you're in a big downtrend, obviously you're just buying all the way down. Okay, and, it, and if you're in an uptrend, you're just kind of uh, dollar cost averaging on the way up. Um, I, I'm not literally just waiting to uh, make a big purchase other than the Perth Mint. I'll be, I'll be making a, a big Perth Mint purchase this fall, but then we'll see what happens after that. So that's that's the next step. If I can get to the point where I can actually target a dollar figure and say I'm going to wait till we get there, then that, I guess that would be uh, make me more complete in my uh, in my approach to buying. All right, guys, I'll uh, talk to you later.